Hello guys and welcome back for the November JRPG News Roundup. We start with the Falcom news as always. On the merch side of things, a few interesting points for Falcom lovers. Initially, if you like Christmas cake, then there's an East 10 themed one up for reservation for 5,500 yen each, but in Japan only. I will say though, from experience, they often look better than they taste. East 10 also has its soundtrack up for pre-order. You can get these acrylic stands as a bonus if you do so from the Falcom store. Plus, a complete guide of the game is launching in Japan for 3,000 yen. For the Western merch though, Streaming Arrow Records, who have done a few East themed vinyl sets recently, are now currently putting up pre-orders for the Sky Trilogy, one collection per game. At present, pre-orders for the first sets have closed, but you can get it still as a bonus. Bundle. Super Groupies have also done a restock of the Watch and Bag combo for Altina, Reen and Estelle, so if you missed out the first time around, you can check that out. The Quest Queue Elisa figure is now up for pre-order at just under 24,000 yen. It will be releasing in December 2024. And finally, the Estelle figure is now up for pre-order on the likes of Army Army for 17,000 yen. It releases in June 2024. On the game side of things, the Eastern Trail series have been discounted on Steam as part of the Autumn Sale, so it's a good time to jump in. The Japanese exclusive Gagav Trilogy mobile title has had a trailer shown off, and in addition, the Northern War mobile title has been confirmed as releasing on December the 6th for Japan. I personally don't care about this too much, not after watching that anime. And lastly for Falcom, the shareholder meeting, which is occurring on December the 15th. And we already have confirmation of what's going to be covered thanks to Hanske. A new Trails game is on the way, development costs will be accrued in advance in an effort to expand development on new IPs, and two Switch games are in development, one of those being Kuro no Kiseki on Switch, which already had its pre-order up on the Falcom store. Moving to the general JRPG news now, starting with merch. Tales of Arise's new expansion, Beyond the Dawn, now has its soundtrack available on streaming services. And in addition to that expansion's release, Pinbox have announced a new line of Tales of Arise pins to pre-order. Vanillaware have announced that pre-orders have gone up for the Unicorn Overlord soundtrack at 4400 yen via Japanese site Ebten. And rounding out the merch side will be Square. A Trials of Mana figure of Angela has gone up for pre-order developed by Flair, releasing in May 2024. It comes to 25,000 yen. Vinyl sets have been announced for Final Fantasy XIV and all of its expansions. $30 each or $125 to get the whole lot. They release in December this year. And lastly, thanks to fans, an official Xenogears novel has been translated for your reading pleasure. Called Xenogears A God Slaying Story, it's available to download via PDF and took around a year to translate. Ensuring now that all forms of media related to Xenogears like manga have been translated from their origin language. On the developer side of things, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has been rated by the ESRB as teen, referring to your typical fare like blood and violence for justification. For Star Ocean though, SO2R has now received well over 1,000 Steam reviews, sitting at a 96% positive rating. It was so well received that producer Kei Komaki also came out to thank fans for the game's reception. It no doubt will be on many people's best RPGs list for the year. Another game that gained a fair level of plaudits and Little Goody Two Shoes has been confirmed as not receiving a sequel. The developer, Astral Shift, feels that it tied up the story nicely, and they're looking to explore different avenues going forward. Lastly for Square, Yoko Taro has stated that he wants to continue working on Nier for as long as he lives, which is always good to hear, but he also stated that he and Yosuke Saito are currently working on a separate project from Nier that they plan to announce in 2024. Exciting! And talking about exciting, Edelweiss, the developers of the so often forgotten Sarkana of Rice and Ruin, have teased a new release of their own. As part of the third anniversary of the title, Naru was quoted as saying, It's the third anniversary of Sarkana Rice and Ruin. We hope you have been enjoying the currently ongoing free trial of the game on Nintendo Switch Online. We are so grateful that this game's support is still trending after three years since its release. Thank you very much. We will finally be able to make a big announcement in the first half of next year, please look forward to it. I have a lot of respect for Edelweiss considering what they managed to accomplish with Sarkana, so my eyes are glued to this development whatever it may be. 
To Monolith Soft now, in association with Tricrescendo and the Barton Kytos Remaster Collection has got a patch addressing some gameplay bugs. This is great to hear, because even though I've only played the first game for now, it's awesome, and I imagine Origins is more of the same. They combine deck building and RPG mechanics into a cohesive whole, and I don't think I've played many RPGs like it, so further optimization is always welcome. Studio Side, developers of Eternites, have stated that the physical versions of the game are now available to purchase on PS4 and PS5. Atlas now, who had a little issue with the release of Persona 5 Tactica. Of course, the game has since released, but for a small amount of time it was actually available early on Steam. That mistake was rectified fairly quickly, but I dare say some were able to purchase it earlier than others. Persona 5 Strikers, on the other hand, hit the milestone of 2 million units sold worldwide this month. Sea of Stars recently won the accolade of Best Indie Game at the Golden Joysticks Award Show. Congrats to them. And fans have once again come in clutch for Tales of Innocence R, and provided a HD patch for the game. This is the Vita remake of the original game, and the patch soups up environments and character models to give a more fulfilling experience. Spike Chunsoft have announced a patch of their own for Master Detective Archive's Rain Code, adding more voice dialogue and improving load times, which was definitely an issue from when I played it, so I'm glad that that has been addressed. And lastly, before the upcoming releases in light of the autumn sales, Atelier Secret Trilogy has been discounted heavily this month, so if you want to get into Atelier, now might be a good time to do so. Moving to upcoming releases now, starting with delays of which there are two, both of which are from level 5. Action RPG Fantasy Life The Girl Who Steals Time has been delayed till 2024, but it will be coming out in summer of that year. And the second one, well, we saw it coming, but Decca Police has also been delayed to 2024 for quality purposes, though an actual release window was not provided. Subscription services are next, of which the PlayStation Network got some notable additions. Eden Chronicle Rising has been put up on the service, as has a classic in Grandia, so if you've never played it, it could be a chance to do so. And now we move to visual novels briefly. Shinjuku Some is coming to PC in February 2024. Key have announced a new romance visual novel called Anamoi, though at present no platforms or date was given. Alcana Extra 1 and 2P is coming to PS4 for December 2023 and January 2024, but only in Japan. And lastly, Tsukuhime A Piece of Glass Moon is coming to PS4 and Switch in summer 2024 for the West. We end this month with the standard JRPG releases now starting with Kingdom Hearts Missing Link that is launching for mobile in 2024. Trails Through Daybreak, as mentioned in the Falcom section, is coming to Switch in February 2024, though this is only for Japan. The Western release will be later in the same year. An action RPG called Little Noah Sign of Paradise is now available on Xbox Series and Xbox One. A collection RPG called Project BSS has been announced on PC and mobile, though no release date was given. Nippon Ichi Software have announced a new SRPG for Japan called Stellar Abyss, coming to PS4, PS5 and Switch, for February 29th. A horror RPG called Catechesis, originally released back in 2013, is now coming to all modern consoles. No release date was given. A dungeon RPG called Metro Questa that is already on PC is coming to all modern platforms on December the 15th. An action RPG called Noctory was recently released on PC on November the 28th. A turn-based RPG called The Last Hour of an Epic to the Moon is coming to PC in 2024. Its premise is to apparently represent, as its title suggests, the last hour of a 100-hour journey. Action RPG Neptunia Sisters vs Sisters, which is already on all other modern platforms, is coming to Switch on January the 23rd, 2024. SRPG Arcadian Atlas, which is already on PC, has also been released on PS4, PS5, Xbox Series and Xbox One for this month, November the 30th. A collection of Class of Heroes Complete Edition, a dungeon RPG, has been announced for early 2024, coming to PS5, Switch and PC. An SRPG called Cards RPG The Misty Battlefield is going to PS5 and Switch with a PC version already announced recently. It will release in 2024. Turn-based RPG Witchspring R is coming to Switch in Spring 2024. It's already available on PC. 
A turn-based RPG in Zhanyan Sword, which is also already on PC, is once again coming to Switch on December the 8th. Turn-based RPGs Cold Steel 3 and Cold Steel 4 are launching for PS5 on February the 16th. They are currently already available on PS4, PC and Switch. Turn-based RPG The Legend of Legacy HD will be releasing on March the 22nd, 2024 for PS4, PS5, Switch and PC. A new action RPG called Arisen Force Vonimir is releasing in Q4 2024 for all modern platforms. A Kickstarter campaign has also been launched seeking $15,000. And lastly, the newest Atelier entry, the mobile title Lesliana, is coming west in 2024. As with its Japanese release, it's free to play and comes to mobile and PC. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe for more JRPG content and consider joining my Patreon if you're interested. Peace.